Hey guys, Quicksilver Gaming here, bringing you another episode of Ultimate General American Revolution. This is episode 9 of our new Let's Play. If you missed episode 1, I'll put a link in the top right hand corner to the episode 1. And we are under attack. You can see it's December 9th, 1775. So a little while has gone by since the last, last episode. I just wanted to sort of power through winter as a lot of it is boring. But the British are sending another another group of men down to Portsmouth for another battle. And I think this should be another pretty easy, easy battle. I could let these guys come down too and be part of the battle. And I think that might be a good idea, to be honest. So let's, let's do that. Let them come down to be part of the battle. We'll, we'll win the initial skirmishing. As far as our fleet, they're not quite yet repaired. I have been losing a lot of money because, oh, okay. My guys are running out of Portsmouth, which is rather interesting. Um, man, I, I would like those guys to show up as reinforcements, but it's not happening quite yet. And there we go. I think that is it. Okay, so let's do this battle real quick. So a second battle of Portsmouth in the winter. As I said, these guys will come on as reinforcements and we'll go ahead and smash these guys. Yeah, this battle will be pretty fun. We are already in a very close proximity to one another. Um, thankfully, our cannons are actually in decent positions as opposed to how they sometimes are, which is um, in dreadful, dreadful positions. Uh, somebody mentioned I, I wasn't using hold a lot. That is on purpose. Um, I use hold on units that I believe are in a good firing position and don't need to rotate. Whereas any unit that I believe needs to rotate, I don't press hold because then you're you don't have optimized. Uh, firing lines. So that is on purpose. So you can see like over here, those guys are are using the hold command, whereas others might not use the hold command. Uh, Quicksilver that's get up, like these guys now can use it. I probably uh, should have used it a little bit more than I was, but I think um, I, I think I have a, a reason why I wasn't. And I've been scolded in the past for using the hold button too too often, so Sort of like a lose-lose situation for me. I, I I use it, and then I get scolded. I don't use it, I get scolded. But uh, that that's my logic and reasoning behind it. Is units that need to need to rotate when they shoot, they they are not going on hold. So I I, I hope that clarifies that. Anyways, I need to move up. Well, um, this this is going to be pretty much a massacre. I can already see it. So I just need to make sure I, I maintain a strong core for my army and then we'll we'll start moving out some men on the flanks and pushing up. I would like this cannon to be deployed a little bit better. It's deployed really really poorly. Like this cannon, it wouldn't be good to press hold on it. Uh, these guys, not so sure, but we'll do it. Um, over here they need to move up just a little. And then we can start moving these guys up and try and try and wrap around the enemy. So over here, the enemy is. I don't exactly know what the enemy is doing, but I would like to refuse that flank just a little. Of course, I hit retreat and they're not retreating. There we go. There's the retreat. Okay. Uh, sometimes I have to press the buttons twice, I think. That can happen quite often. Alright, let's continue wrapping up this flank over here. And that'll be perfect if we can do so. Move you guys a little bit further forward. And maybe this artillery further forward. I have to figure out what to do with that artillery. It is a problem. But we will have to figure out you know, exactly what we want to do about that problem. Um, shifting, shifting forces forward. I think we could move this cannon up. And then that'll allow me to, to place two regiments, I believe, between the two cannon lines. Move that. Somebody surrendered. That's perfect. Um, I don't know why those guys surrendered. Hopefully they don't group back up because of routing unit. Yeah, okay. They need to change that mechanic. A routing unit should not recapture a, a surrendering unit. 
but I mean, that, that's it's so minor at this point. It feels like I'm I'm nitpicking quite a bit in that particular case, but that is that is a feature that you know when when the game is all polished, it would be really nice to to have things that are logical in that case. Uh, over here, once again. As I said, still trying to push up over here. Let's bring Quicksilver over there. We haven't taken too many casualties, but I do have to be careful of how many casualties we take. Um, we are very, very low on officers, which is a major, major problem. I think, I think you guys could charge into there, and you guys could charge into there. And then that would allow you to move up over here. And I think if we move these cannons up over here that would be fantastic um pull you guys forward that artillery should should fold that being said um it's uh probably going to take a little bit longer than i would like all right let's get all of you back and then that's uh we, we can turn you guys back on to shooting or uh, stop the, the hold fire. I think I've told you guys to move quite a few times now and you guys have refused to move. I would like you to follow orders. That is the uh, important part of being, um, being a founding member of the Quicksilver Colonials. That's what we're going to call it. It has a nice ring to it, right? The Quicksilver Colonials. What do you guys think of that name? I, I kind of like that, that name quite a bit. Grabbing that cannon helps out a lot. This is going to just turn into a bunch of wrap-up by the looks of it. Really need these cannons to to deploy. That'll help out a ton. I probably need to just fast forward. This this battle's getting a little bit strange in terms of how the AI is positioning itself. So it's just reposition, move you guys out on the flank a little bit more. Um, there, Those are our prisoners over there. I don't know why you guys are firing like that. Would love you to rotate your cannons. There you go. And then over here, we can start wrapping around most likely. Um, that would be absolutely fantastic. And then you guys, oops, I probably hit withdraw. I like to control click my units. Uh, I, I find it's a lot better than drag clicking my units, but I could be wrong in that department. That is for sure. I'm just move you guys up. Quicksilver, once again, stay over here. I think we're just going to sit on a sort of fast, fire, uh, fast forward mode because the British just need to eventually route and then we will have the battlefield. So we could probably move you guys up. There we go. There's the mass route. No point in chasing them down. We grabbed, well, that says that's cannon crew, but they look like they're they're moving fast. Uh, let's, let's see if we can go grab them. I'll cut this part out though. All right, that took a little bit too more, uh, too much effort. So I gave up. So we lost 263, the 781, not too bad. We did destroy their cannons in one of the regiments, which is the important part. Um, and as you saw there, it, I, I had two regiments that were sort of resting, getting ready for the charge and then charged them in. That to me is, uh, sort of the way you you want to do it. I need these guys to run out and go capture some some red coats. So I always recommend doing a little bit of micro, get that going, and you might capture more men than you would otherwise. Um, let's see, not really working per se. Let's have Quicksilver grab all of these supplies. Okay. Not working, unfortunately. So, just need you guys to all grab supplies. That is the key right now. Richardson, grab those supplies. I don't know how many supplies we got from all of this. Um, 42 is not great. And then, who are you? I didn't see what the other one was, so. Let's just have everybody go back into Portsmouth. Uh, actually, some of that wasn't too shabby. I feel like sometimes the supplies... Are decent and sometimes they're not. So things that I'm doing, I am building a new Fusilier regiment down here, but as you can see I don't have any officers. These guys I would eventually like to 
make them fusiliers. These guys are just going to hang out in Providence for the time being. And then we're going to move you back out over here. Oh, I just did all of it. Army organization. That is uh, something I would greatly appreciate. A little bit better army organization. So just click the unit and have them leave. It would be great. I don't think... Maybe you can. I don't think you can select a unit in a garrison and double click another garrison and have them move from one to one. Um, might possibly. I, I, I know I've seen people talk about different ways of moving troops. And there's there's definitely a few different ways. Uh, during the winter, though, I don't really want to attack. I'll let the British continue to bleed their forces out during the winter. Um, but I do need to get my fleet out here. And as you can see, the British fleet is growing and growing and growing. I probably need to stick to these waters over here. It seems like the British keep sending uh, a single 40-gun ship over there. And then eventually I will build my own 40-gun ships. As far as what things are looking like over here, I am building some infrastructure in Connecticut so I can build more factories because we're at cap. So that's how you increase this 5 of 5 is you build out the infrastructure. Um, I do have factories. I have... Not many shipyards. I, I will probably eventually build another shipyard in New Haven, but that's not a priority right now. We are building mining out in New York. I feel like that's really important to get all of those resources. We have mines elsewhere, but this is sort of what our infrastructure is looking like. As far as our production, we have 12 factories producing. We have some Virginia 76s, which I think actually might be good to slow those down a little and then work on the United States, and then uh, always building six-pound field guns. As far as market, we have some civilian muskets, U.S. muskets, uh, some brown besses left over, and then um, a good chunk of Virginia 76s over there. So what I am doing is I'm trying to build up some of my regiments, like you can see United States muskets down the line over here. These guys have United States muskets and six pounders, and then the brown shirts or red shirts, whatever you want to call them, they all have brown besses and six pounders. And same here, brown besses and six pounders. Over here, um, not those guys, these guys, I'm building up a bunch of guys with brown besses because I had left over. And I do want to start building a guards unit in my, my next groups, uh, or next fusilier regiment. So all fusilier regiments. From here on, we'll have four Fusiliers, an Artillery, and then a Guards unit, which we unlocked. And they'll have the best guns available, which is usually just the Brown Besses. Um, eventually, the idea is that our Fusiliers will have the Virginia Rifles and Brown Besses. And then we can start equipping a bunch of the, the Militia with U.S. Muskets. And I'm going to do that already. So, I don't know if you guys know how to how to replace weapons, but I'll do a very, very quick tutorial here. You just double click on the unit, get into the edit screen, and then here where it says civilian musket, you can choose United States instead, and it tells you how many left you have in the arsenal and how many it needs. And then we're just going to upgrade these guys to six pound field guns too, because why not? We are building them. So once you can start upgrading your militia to having US muskets, they actually become very very capable units which is which is really nice so that's just where you know tweaking tweaking our production supplies i think works in our favor so we'll do something like three three virginia 76s and uh, no let's go back to four i uh, i really want to equip all my fusiliers with these they're, they're definitely more costly but during winter there's not a lot that you need to do we just need these guys to repair um, if you look at our seaboard, yeah, 13 ships, 332 guns. So that is a massive fleet with some really big gun totals, 5 ships, 158. One ship, maybe 12 guns, unsure. So I need to get my ships out of the waters over here. Uh, the, the closer we get to 40 gun ships, I might just disband my, my fleet and then build up 40 gun ships because these ships are really battered. We're losing a lot of money because I did bump my intelligence up to level 2 for a while. And that's like 5,200 uh, 5, gold per month or something. It's absolutely ludicrous. Um, 
big discussion on Discord about intelligence. I I will say that I feel like the base rate of sabotage events in the game is very rough, especially on a normal difficulty, which is what we're playing right now. It's uh, a little too high. I think um, I, I had an even on level two, I had another officer killed. So in the last like month and a half, I've had four officers killed. I had a four, I, I didn't show it, but it was it was more of a nuisance than anything. Fort Stevens changed hands and we we quickly retook it because all it does is it puts a couple militia in there. So it's that I would like to specify the the sabotage events there it's not a difficulty thing. It's just more of an annoyance, and I think they need to fine-tune that annoyance. Um, and I, I think just the base rates of how the British do it need to be looked at. And the amount of money you have to spend on intelligence is absolutely insane. USS Machias Liberty, an 18-gun ship. I mean, we'll take it. Is it in Newport, or is it in... Where is it? Oh? Where'd they put Machias? Oh, Portsmouth. Okay. I mean, great, we'll somehow get that ship out of Portsmouth. You can see we're, we're low on officers. We are building up our schoolhouses. We have schoolhouses, like, all over, all over the place. Um, we'll, we'll build up that, and we're even, we've built colleges in a lot of those places, too. And I think we're going down the route where we can build, uh, build universities soon. So we do have a lot of officer production. This is absolute insane amount of ships. I don't know how I'm going to get this ship down there. Uh, very cool though that it, it's a two-star two star ship that helps a bunch. Um, arrest the poachers. We'll do that because Connecticut is amazing for loyalty and it just really doesn't seem to matter all that much. Man, that, that money is getting really rough. I am really tempted because of how many ships are about to just disband the Navy at this point and wait until we can build those 40 gun ships. Um, Navy Innovation 2 is 14 days away and then we'll have to get into frigates and I think it's like the fifth rate Diana class is is one of the ones I would really like. It carries 280 men so it's really good. The Unity class isn't too shabby either. Obviously, the Hermione has more guns, but I need the troops to, to board the enemy. With that being said, what I'll probably do is fast forward through a lot of the boring parts of winter, see if I can do something with my fleet, if I can group it up and take on any of these two, two fleet ships. But there's, I mean, the British have ramped up pretty badly over there. I, I really would like to get them back to Newport and New Haven, but... As I said, really low on money. I think I might just start disbanding some of those ships, to be honest. Just thought I would show you this. I don't know how it ran the blockade, but it, it made it to Boston. There were multiple fleets in the way. What I did was I tried to time it to where the enemy was engaging my small merchant vessels, as opposed to uh, being wide open, and I think that really, really helped. Um, USA and France. I like France, so... It's given the copper, we don't need that copper, but I'm absolutely floored that six ships made it through. Um, the next goal is to somehow try and make it to Newport, but uh, it'll be interesting to run this blockade. I would really like to get out of Boston here, because the British, you can just see there's fleet, fleet, fleet. There's two more fleets over here. It's it's pretty rough, but we'll, we'll try. Figured I'd show you something. I, I've been doing some rep grinding. I actually... Fast forwarded our um, Navy Innovation 2 and they moved out their big fleet over here and they left a bunch of like 18 gun ships over here. So I've I think I've destroyed three or four now and there's another two that I'm grabbing there. Sure, I'll give you some ammunition. I don't really care about that. And I've just been sinking small ships left and right so you can see there are no more British in these waters. I could go up to Portsmouth and try and take out those two ships. That might actually be a 40-gun ship and an 18-gun ship, so that's very tempting. They've moved their big fleet. Uh, four, four ships, 128 guns. I mean, it might not be that big. It could be could be a bunch of 30-gun ships. There could be a 68, and I, I don't know. But there's there's a 40-gun ship right there. So the, the rep grinding, very, very helpful. I was down to 23, back up to 
36 so i might i might go to portsmouth grab those or i might go out into the sea here but this is the this is what i needed i needed need that big 13 ship fleet to go away and there's one down here i would like to to clear out a lot of this though so we'll see where i go here's an interesting one we have cornered a 48 gun ship now this will be a little bit difficult to take but getting this 48 gun ship is worth everything we have right now because these 30 gun ships they're they're old they're beaten up their whole strength is really bad so we'll we'll try and grab this 48 gun ship it'll be pretty difficult it's three stars we're two stars across the board we're going to have to do that there's like a, a rowboat tactic i've seen where you you try to board and then you just like continuously bring on ships to help board your ship um and the 18 gun ship really helps because you can just ram the 18 gun ship into the 48 gun ship to to slow it down okay this isn't a great formation right here but we are just going to try and go headlong into the ship and see if we can start boarding it i have turned all the ships uh to where they can to where they can board it and then i have also made it to where they are all shooting grape shot so that is that is the plan here and we we just need numbers that is basically how this is going to work and we are going to swarm it so i think uh that ship overshot i believe why did it unlock onto the ship okay we got one board so that's great that's turn you around it's really trying to get away but i think lizard should be able to did he demast me he did that's fine okay lizard is doing better than i was expecting but not great need providence to move over and lizard lizard has surrendered so there's problem number one can you can you just sit like right there and can you go in and then you need to move in move in over here we can't seem to get the boarding action to go because we don't have a good angle i think i need you to move out so that this ship can come in and board And then I wonder can if we can reboard with another ship. Come on, you should be in range to throw your grappling hooks. I wish when uh you chose like grapple with the enemy ship that it would just maneuver in a way for you to where it can grapple. Because I find it very, very difficult to, to actually get all of that to go. Okay, I want you to stop. I want you to stop, and I want you to stop. Alright, I think with Lizard, that actually might work how I just did it. If we just send our guys back and forth from each ship. Come on, target that. And then... Yeah, you should be able to grapple. There you go, you're grappling again. And then you guys go on to there. And then it's just going to be like a back and forth. Okay, can you guys stop? Oh, I think we're doing it. I think we're doing it. Come on. Yes. Yes. Let's just do that. Okay. Perfect. And we kept all of our ships? Holy cow. Oh, we have got to get back to port now. Oh my goodness. We, we kept all of our ships and captured a 48-gun ship. That is absolutely massive for us. Okay, pause, 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 pause. 48 gun ship, and we didn't do a lot of damage to it because we we're firing mostly grape shot. This is incredibly huge for us. That is monstrous. Now I need to look what is going on over here. So intelligence reports, I don't exactly know what's down here. I would love to get back to New Haven, but the smartest thing here might just be go back to Boston with what we've got because there's no point in losing all of this stuff. I can't believe we took that. Finally, I got the double boarding to work. So 
If you guys didn't realize what happened there, I boarded one side of the ship with our biggest ship. That ship eventually surrendered, but it still had 177 men on board. The ship on the other side engaged it. While it was engaging, I took a rowboat to the ship that had surrendered, recruited it, and then that sort of tipped the scale there, and I just kind of kept recruiting them with rowboats. And uh, yeah, that... Oh, I'm so happy there. So this sent the ship back to back to Boston because I'm a little little weary, although, man, making it down to New Haven would be huge. We're going to risk going down to New Haven. That is going to be our plan, where we are going to risk that. Okay, I changed my mind. We actually engaged two ships over here and sank them via auto-resolve, but if you look at this ship's sea map, there's six ships over here with 218 guns, the one with 40, and two with a total of 40. We just don't have the crew, so let's just go back to Boston, recrew, Re rearm and I think that'll be the plan there and then we can bring this fleet down to New Haven and man we can start capturing 40 gun ships now and that is that is absolutely huge I feel like that was one of the biggest victories that we have had in this game is capturing a 40 gun ship and we didn't lose a lot to be honest like our ships are battered but they were battered beforehand um like USS Lizard really really battered but indefatigable which i love that it's a real british ship name it's uh i love that we we snagged that so let's let's get back into boston and there we go that's uh, i i can't express how huge that is for getting the fleet going so this is going to be willpower and then this is going to be the gunnery and bordering bordering and boarding and then what does it have as 32 pound and 24 pound guns on it? No wonder that thing like shreds us. I mean, you look like that's six pounders, nine pounders, nine pounders. Oh, and we lost an officer here. So we need a new officer. Um, Bainton Fitzpatrick, you look pretty good. And then let's change this to USS Indefatigable. It is mine. I am the captain now. All right, it is the new year, January 6, 1776, and the British really, really want to retake Portsmouth, but they're not doing it in a way that makes a lot of sense to me. So no, we really only need three units to continuously um, shut shut this down. I think they're sending three units, and uh, we'll, we'll have another bite at Portsmouth, and that'll probably be the end of the episode once that starts. So this looks pretty good to me. No one cannon on their end. Some of its militia. This is this is really in our favor. Um, I, I'll also show you. I, I upgraded our men. So one of these has uh, nothing but Virginias. And the rest have nothing but Brown Besses. And they're all six pounders. We've even started to equip our militia with US muskets. So we're, we're starting to become a nice little force here. But let's take this battle. It's just getting our forces into position. We're going to form a line here. Just because this regiment is so far back and I do want my guns to be, you know, s somewhat together. I, I don't want to, I don't want the British to, to pick us off piecemeal. That's kind of, you know, our thing, pick, pick them off piecemeal. So just a little bit of a tactical redeployment. And then you can see the British are moving up with their skirmishers. Their skirmishers are quite nasty. I, I really do wish I had some skirmishers of my own in my force, but that'll that'll come eventually and then let's just make sure you guys are positioned where i want you to be and then you guys uh not quite i talk about this quite a few times where this is not exactly how i how i like to move the troops for some reason when you move troops on top of other troops your your cool little line kind of goes away so Let's start pushing this line up a little bit. Take this tree line. There are some some red coats in that tree line. Now I can see it. Oops. Not quite what I want to do there. Okay. Let me just draw my line, please. And then if we can grab this artillery and put it there, that'll be great. And then these two guys can move up over there. You'll be in support. Quicksilver, get in the center. We need more support in the center. Actually, just uh, 
maybe something like that will be pretty good. Yep, there's some nice, nice canister shot over there. Really like to see that. Let's just grab you guys, shift a little. We'll put you guys on hold. And then over here, we'll put you guys on hold. And then, hopefully... Let me redo my line, please. Come on. You can see how much I'm struggling with that because it's I'm trying to draw on top of my unit, which is already already there. So this this should be pretty easy. We've gotten into a position. Just need our line to form up kind of exactly how I want it to be, which is a lot more difficult in this game than it is in American Civil War, which is a little bit unfortunate. You would like it to be easier than an older game, but that's all right. Okay, we are taking some damage right there, so let's have you guys fall back, and then you guys probably do something like this. That might be a good idea. Quit falling back. Ah, oh, man, another officer wounded. We are... we're just eating officers. We, we, have, we have a severe deficit of officers. And I've been pretty good about keeping my officer infrastructure um, at a high. And what I mean by that is just having lots of colleges, schools, we're working on universities next. Those are the things that really help out um, in, in, that regard, in that regard, keeping your officer numbers fairly high. So let's, let's put you guys on hold. That'll work. Um, you guys can hold, and then over here, you guys can probably go on hold. And I'll give you a little bit more cover, and hopefully, hopefully we can smash over here. That is, that is the plan. They're firing round shot. You'd think they would be... Okay, they're in great shot range. Perfect. Uh, it's weird. Round shot seems to actually suffer from... The terrain, whereas Grape Shot seems to go completely through the terrain. We'll fast forward this a little because this battle's sort of getting to the point where it doesn't necessarily matter. Ooh, they destroy a cannon? I wonder if that counts as uh, destroying a cannon for the overall battle. Because there's definitely a cannon that went down. I think I'm down to three cannons. Over here, so pretty, pretty nasty. Um, they're definitely doing some counter battery fire over there, and I don't like it. I don't like it at all. So let's see if we can move our forces up and then try and flank them a little. If I can draw this line. It is so difficult to draw lines in this in this game. Uh, very unfortunate, as that is something I. I really like to do is to draw the line of my formation and get them in a nice, nice attack column, attack line, however you want to, whatever you want to say over there. I'm actually, you guys will sit over there. We'll move you guys down over here because we'll probably combine you two eventually. You guys are doing all right. Let's get you holding for that extra cover. And then should be pretty good over there. Alright, so let's continue this flank. Let's speed things up a little bit. I don't want to overextend. I also don't know if those skirmishers, I can't remember if they fully routed or not. I know I saw the symbol, but I'm just, I cannot for the life of me remember. Alright, let's grab you guys. Let's push you over here, and then you guys can combine. You move out over here. Get out on that flank. I think you guys could hold and be fine. You guys could probably hold and be fine. And then you are a big beefy unit now and they routed. So let's try and cut them off a little. And then let's try and go grab that artillery. But I doubt I doubt we'll be able to grab it in time. But we'll, we'll cut it off here. Um, okay. Uh, they didn't... Hmm. They didn't surrender. So that's unfortunate. Man, where'd their artillery go? They ran fast. Holy cow. I don't even see their guns, so 
they got away fast. We caused them to surrender. Yeah, man, their, their artillery ran away. Brave, brave Sarabin can't catch them. That seems to be a little bit of a bug there. Not sure, but we're, we'll just end it here. Okay, we did lose a gun. Rather unfortunate. I was, I was thinking it looked like we lost a gun there. As soon as I opened the screen there, I saw a surrender. So one regiment surrendered. Let's see if we can get the other regiment to surrender too. Um, that would be fantastic. I don't know exactly what is going on there. There's just a big blob. Um, but we are dealing a lot of damage to them. They're down to 200. And they're going to get away. So we'll just capture all of this equipment. See it. It'll be a lovely amount, uh, maybe. I don't know. 30. Uh, it, was, it was decent. I mean, it wasn't great, but it was decent. Uh, they they really, really want to take Portsmouth. This is a rather ridiculous feature. Um, I like all my recruits are going to Boston because of this. The the ships here. I don't need five thousand recruits. I need four hundred and three. Um, this is this is just a little absurd. And I don't really know how to fix it. Oh, and there's a lot of ships out here. Eight ships, 276 guns. Wow. Okay, that is that is good to good to know over there. But let's um let's grab you guys. Leave Garrison, have you go back to Salem. Quicksilver just kind of being eyes and ears. So they've attacked Portsmouth. What is that? Like three times over the last two episodes. They attacked Fort Lavelle once. They really want Portsmouth. I think in the winter you can probably provoke the British into some pretty bad attacks, the more I think about it. Yeah, we don't need... This is this is absolutely ridiculous. Like, look at all those wagons going to Boston. But I was going to show you what I was talking about. So um, over here, if you edit, we have all of these Virginia 76s, uh, which is pretty awesome. Six-pound field gun. And then the other regiment, United States, six-pound field gun. These guys should have brown besses. These guys also have um, brown besses, if I remember, and six pounders. And then we started equipping militia with U.S. muskets and then six pound field guns where we have them. And then not them yet. They'll eventually become fusiliers. These guys, I believe, are brown besses and six pound field guns. And then if you look at our production, so we have four factories going into Virginia 76s at 14 per day and then... Five factories in the excess going to United States muskets at 23 per day. We are creating a six pound field gun every five or I think it's like every six days is actually what it is. We're, we have tons of ammunition. I could probably I like having a lot of ammunition. Um, so I'm a little hesitant. Maybe once we get over 500, I can slow it down to two days. Uh, maybe, we'll, we'll slow it down to two a day for a little while there. And then if you go into our market, we have tons of civilian muskets, which I like, uh, just having a little bit of excess. Brown Besses, United States muskets. I sold the Charlevees because the, the Virginia 76 is actually better, which is pretty cool. Very cool, actually. And then this is what our cannon situation looks like. We have these land service mortars over there. And then if you look at our infrastructure, you'll see we're building a factory in Rhode Island. We're building... We're building infrastructure in Connecticut over there, factory over here in Connecticut, a mine in New York. So we're we're trying to build up our infrastructure. We nearly have more over here. As far as money, we are trying to sell off stuff when we don't need it. We could probably sell these six pound naval guns, actually. Um, generally selling about five at a time gives you your best bang for your buck. Um, those don't sell for much at all, though which is rather unfortunate. We're still doing really well on provisions, furs. Um, I've got it to where I keep two, so it's not really an auto sell, but you set this limit in two, so it'll automatically sell down to two. Same with textiles, I've kept it at 10 just because of ship sales. Rum, I've kept it at five. I don't really know why I kept it at five. So let's go down to two. And so we'll sell that. Um, we need... We lost a wagon somewhere. That's rather interesting. I wonder if that um, one finally went to 300 men. It did. So maybe the wagon finally went over there. But 
Over at Fort Lavelle, I believe we've, yeah, we've given them United States muskets, four pound galloper gun. Over here, these guys are US muskets, three pound galloper. The rest are still civilian muskets as we slowly but surely um, re rearm our army, I guess is the best way to put it. And then these guys are struggling to repair. I, I don't know if, I guess it'll take 15 days to repair. We really need them at New Haven and not Boston, but it was just a little bit too risky. And there's six ships with 218 guns. I bet we could take that. That would be pretty crazy, but we we really need our ships to be um, a lot better. I really don't need 6,000 recruits, though, over there. So what's this? Uh, Britain and Miami's are declining, so that is perfect. And I think that is kind of all I wanted to show you guys. We're, we're building up where we can. Um, I, I will eventually have the better versions of stables everywhere. Uh, we could build that into a blacksmith shop. That'll help because that's another factory. And you can see where we're really, really trying to get this all built up. Let's actually continue doing that because that's essentially another factory. Oh, we should have should have also done there. This area here, they have such low construction points that I'm kind of building something every once in a while there. Because it'll be done like maybe before the campaign is over. Maybe not. Um not not as big. Or not as important as, say, like Portsmouth, which I, I need to upgrade their schoolhouse. Um, common sense. Today, the English-born American political activist Thomas Paine printed his 47-page pamphlet, Common Sense. The pamphlet is based on a series of letters published in various Philadelphia papers containing various moral and political arguments to encourage common people in the colonies to fight for egalitarian government, or egalitarian government. I, I know how to speak sometimes but speaking common sense this seems like a great time to end the episode it's also common sense to like comment subscribe all of that youtube jazz it greatly helps out the channel those likes really get the video out there the comments just keep me motivated as you guys know i, I tend to reply to a lot of them or i like and you know heart a bunch of them i, I absolutely love reading your guys's comments they're absolutely fantastic so let me know what you think about this one. Uh, this one maybe a little bit more light, just kind of two easy battles at Portsmouth, but capturing that 48 gunship really pushes us forward in the Navy Department. That was absolutely massive, so hopefully that'll all get repaired up and by um, late January we can push out with that force. Anyways, I shall see you in the next episode. As always, guys, until next time.